Let's look at problem 2.39. As you can see, we have a circle oops, with radius r with two cavities inside. One with radius a and charge on the middle qa, one with radius b and charge qb. So on the outer side, we're going to have charge opposite of the charge inside with the same value, so negative qb, because we don't know if qa and QB are positive or negative. So we're just going to say the opposite of that, because we know it's going to be the opposite. So if QB is positive, then the outside charge will be negative. And if QB is negative, then the outside charge will be positive. Same thing for QA. Pretty simply, the charge will be using the same formula than R squared. We're going to have three different charges, three different surfaces. So for the charge surface A, we're going to have negative QA over 4 pi A squared. For the charge surface B, so on the, answer, on the other side here, a negative QB, because that's the charge that we have right here, over 4 pi and then B squared, because that's the radius, I'm sorry, the radius here. Then the R, we're going to have both charges, because as you can see here, it's going to be a positive QB and positive QA on the other side, because those are the charges are being repulsed over 4 pi r squared, because that's a radius of the thing. Then we have to find the electric field on the outside, so let's call it E out, is equals to, well, as always, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared in the r direction. Now, r squared is in our case, not known because we don't know what point charge we're going to find. We're just finding a random point. So we're just going to keep it as small r. But q is equals to what? Well, let's look at the surface. We just said that the surface is going to be this one right here. This is the charge that is on the surface. So q, qb plus qa. So the electric field on the outside will be equals to 1 over 4 pi, absolutely not, QA plus QB over R squared in the R direction. And that is our answer for the electric field. Now, what if we want to find the electric field right on the other ring? of our two holes. So it starts from QA. So it's in order. QA we said it's gonna be as always as we feel that let's say A. So the radius of A uh, radius A one over four pi in our case R epsilon naught and then the charge Q over the radius squared in the radius direction. Now we know that the radius is gonna be equals to A and the, the charge is equal to the charge A. This means that the electric field will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, so charge field at A, uh, times Q of A over A squared in the A direction. That is our answer for electric field at A. And of course, electric field at B will be very similar. It will be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught QB over B squared in the B direction. Now, you may be wondering why, in our case, the electric field is going to be QB instead of negative QB and QA. Well, the answer is very simple, because if we're looking at a point on the outer ring right here, the charge inside the circle is simply going to be QB. Not the, no, it doesn't matter the charge right here. We're looking at the electric field given by the, the charge inside our circle. And the circle in the case is of radius B, so this one right here, because radius A, so this one right here. The charge includes here is QA, and the charge includes includes here is QB. Now, for point D instead, let me actually name this so it's a little clear. What is the force on QA 
MQB. Well, the force on QA and QB, look at the thing again. Well, QB will be attractive, so in this case, there's a force going this way. Oops. Here, there's a torque going this way. So it's going to push and pull this way. Here, pull this way. Here, pull this way. And if you think about it, it's being pulled in all direction with the same exact magnitude. That means that these forces are continuous. We can say, for example, they're continuous over a certain surface, so from 0 to 2 pi. And then we'll just say that, for example, it's the cosine of this or the sine. It doesn't really matter because, as you can see, whether it's sine or cosine here, let's call this function x dx. Uh, and that is actually it's not exactly correct to call it x dx. But it's going to be a, it's going to be a closed loop. So that means that whatever I put in here, the answer is going to be zero. So the force for QA and QB, so force on QA is equal to zero, force on QB is equal to zero. And that is our answer. Now, let's look at the last part. And it's if instead you were to add a third charge, QC, let's put it here for right now, QC, that would change. Well, imagine that QC is not just placed here. It can be placed anywhere around here. So what actually changes? Well, let's think about it. If QC affecting the charge on the outside of our radi circular radius A, not really. We can't, it doesn't matter if it's close or far, the QA is always going to be closer, and it's going to be the one that attracts here. So it doesn't matter. QB also, I will attract the negative QB on the, on the outer ring. So that means that these two surfaces should not be affected. But our radius here will actually change because QC now will attract negative QC and then the opposite will be QC. So we will attract the opposite charge next to it. So now our answer here is not correct anymore and it changes. What else changes? Well, our electric field can be taken at any position we said that we called R. But if this R contains QC, then the charge enclosed is not going to be Q, it's not going to be QA plus QB plus QC anymore. Sorry, plus QB. But it's going to be plus QC, of course. And that means that our electric field changes too. So what changes we said? Well, we said that the surface charge at R changes as well as the electric field on the outside changes. Will the other electric field change? Well, let's look at it. The radius A right here, the charging close is still QA, so no. And here, the charging close is still QB, so no. The only thing that changes is the outers, outer electric field and the surface charge at radius R. Now, E, our electric field of, actually, let me call it little r, because that's how you call it, changes. But this means that changes only if QC is inside of it. If QC is outside of it, then it doesn't change. But this can only be said if, and only if is QC is outside. So that means that we have to consider it inside if we don't know what it is. And then our calculate our um, details, the problem, if the problem tells us that it's inside, then it's calculated, we'll calculate it. If the problem tells us it's outside, then we can avoid it. But in our problem, when we put the general solution, QC should be counted as inside because we can always take it out 
but we cannot ever take it in if we're trying to find the general solution. 